In this R Excel users video, I'm going to show you how to use ggplot2 in our studio to create a bar chart by month and year, just like the Excel example on screen. So with that in mind, let's head over to our studio. So what I'm going to do is go over a few steps to be able to one, get the data loaded in, which I've covered in previous video, and then what packages you need to install, what the bar charts look like, depending on which version you use and how you use it. And then finally, how to build out the bar chart to be able to make it look more visually appealing and grouping it by month and year. So first, what we need to do, I'm going to use the code to load in the data set, although you can use the import data set, as I've mentioned in my previous video. So first, what we're going to do is just run this line of code, which is going to import the library read Excel. And then it's going to use this file that I have saved in my documents folder. And then it's going to store it in a data frame called COVID data. So if I run this, You'll then see this has appeared with the data to the side and then you can double click it to view it. So the next thing we need to do is install ggplot2. Now the best thing to do when you do this, you can just load in ggplot2, but it's best to pull in through the whole package of tidyverse because there's a lot more libraries that are part of it and be using some of those a little bit later. So what you just need to do is type in install packages and then tidyverse and then run and then that will install. And then once that's installed, then we need to install the library ggplot2. So all you do is type library and then ggplot2 and then click run and then that's installed. Now, as I mentioned, there's a few ways of bar chart and how the data can look. When you use ggplot, you can have various different styles of charts. And if you wanted just a bar chart that would do a count, you would first type in ggplot, and then in brackets, you'll put the data set that you're using. So the data frame we got here is that one. And then the aesthetics would be, we just want an X axis with the date, and then it will do the count of all the rows. And then you want to state which graph you would like to use. So you would do a plus sign and then put in in this instance, because we want to show the count of the lines by date, we'd use geom underscore bar. And then if we highlight that and run it, you'll see this. Now you'll see at the bottom down here, we have them split out by what look like six month periods. And then it's showing you the number of lines per day there. It's not easy to read. It's not very pretty. So depending on what data you're using, this data set isn't the best to be able to do it in that format. So then if you just want to look at the sum of the cases, which we've got stated here, so we have new cases here and we want to see the sum of all of those by date, then we would do the same ggplot, open up, put in your data set name, which we've got saved here. And then the aesthetics is the X axis will be date. And then the Y axis, we put new cases. And then instead of leaving just geo underscore bar as it was, we then do stat equals identity. So if you try to put a Y axis in here, it would fail. And this is basically saying what that is, and then it will sum. So if we run this now, so now you can see here, we now have a sum of all cases by date, but it's still not the easiest to read. You can see the movements, but then you can see there's days where they've got minus amounts. And then also you've got the scientific formatting down the side on the Y axis. So, you know, it's given us some insight just looking at it this way, but it's still not visually appealing. Now you can create exactly the same bar chart without actually having to put in that additional part of the stat identity. This one, instead of doing bar, you can use col. And if you run this, you see it's exactly the same. So for the example that I'm going to go into, I'm just going to be using this because it's just one step less to make it a lot easier to read. As you'll see, there is quite a bit of code. So to make this bar chart more visually appealing, we're going to do some data transformation using a library called dplyr. And then for the formatting of the X and Y axis, we're going to use the library scales and these are all part of the tidyverse. So then all you would need to do is type library, dplyr, and then library scales, and then run those. 
Now they're in, we can start adding in another column just for the month. Now, as you can see, we have an issue of where there's a bar chart or a line for every single date. Now we want to be able to see that as one month. To do this, you can add a column to your data set to be able to give you just that, the month and the year. So to add a column, all you need to do is start typing in your data set name and then use the dollar sign and then assign what you want to call the column. In this instance, I've called it month. And then you create the arrow sign with the hyphen. So then we can start putting the code in to be able to pull through that particular month column. And how we're gonna do this is by using the date, which is here, to then create a column here that will say for here, 2020 hyphen 01, and then it'd be 01. It would remove the day. So what we're gonna do is just see the month number, and the year number and all the days will be 01. So to do that, we are going to use as.date. Then this knows we're gonna be using a date function to make this happen. And then we use cut within brackets. And what that means is we're gonna just hit the point of where we want to sort of cut the date. So it's still format it in date format. It's just, there's a point of where we want to cut it, which is month. So it only gives us the month and year. And then we put what column we're gonna use it based on. And in this case, we have used date. So you would put the data name in there. And then again, like we've done here, just put in the dollar sign and then the column you're using, which is date. And then a comma, and then we want to state what we want to break it by. And this is where you put breaks and then equal sign month. Now, if we run this, you will see we now have column with months on it and if we scroll down we can see this is november 2020 and you can see 20 november and then like i mentioned it's made all the days zero one now if you wanted just years you could just type in years so if we just type years and then run that code again and if we scroll down as you can see, instead of it being 11, it's 01. So now it's just giving you by years. But for what we want to do, we want to do it by month. So we put it back as month and then we run. So once you've done that, now we can start having some fun with ggplot, building our bar chart. But as I showed in the example, I filtered by United Kingdom. So what I've done is taken our data set and then I've used the pipe function and then used the function filter and then which column I'm going to be filtering on. And then I've put in equals United Kingdom. Now, as you might notice, there's two equal signs here. And when you're using R, because of the functions here, where you can see a lot of these use equal signs. So if you're doing any filtering, you need to ensure that you do two equal signs, because then that will give you the equal sign in R, which is the equivalent of just a single equal sign in Excel. And in addition, what I've done, I've then piped this on directly into ggplot. So instead of me creating a separate data frame, which you could do if you wanted to, you could just go, we're going to call you UK and then point that in there and then run. And then we got UK only data frame that we could use. And then you could create your bar chart using the data frame UK here and then run to then give you what it would look like there. But for this example, I'm going to keep it so I keep the flow of data coming through so we can see how this is created. So now I'm going to show you how to make your bar chart look a lot nicer than this and also group it by month and year. So what I've done is typed in ggplot, just like how I shown earlier. And then the aesthetics, instead of me using date, I'm now using the new month column that we created and then new cases and then do the plus sign and then use the geome underscore col, which is the one you use if you want to sum. And then I've added the functionality of fill and then equals dark blue. And what fill does is allow you to change the color of what you want your bar chart to look like. I've chosen dark blue because that's how it looked on the example that I did on Excel. So I thought I'll keep it consistent. So if we was to run this now, 
as you saw earlier when I did the example. So you can see we now have our data aggregated to month and now the data shows by month and year but again still by six month periods and we still have the scientific formatting. So where we've used dplyr to do the data transformation in these parts we're now going to use scales to format the y and x axis. So to change this so we can see a number with a comma and then also split out by a certain period of numbers we're going to use scale underscore y underscore continuous and that allows us to control how this will look once we do some formatting now the part that will change the scientific part here is labels and i've used comma because the number is so large it's good to use the comma just to make it more readable and at the same time by doing that it will change it to a full number but as you can see you've only got one part there one part there so we can have zero hundred thousands etc etc we want to see more options down the y-axis that's when we use breaks equal sign and the sequence in this case seq and then here we state where do we want to start from where do we want it to get to and how much do we want each part to be as big as so in this case i've got a hundred thousand so if we was to run this now we now get to see the y-axis of a hundred thousand segments going all the way up to the highest point so now we sorted out the y-axis now we want to start looking at the date on the x-axis now we can see at the moment we've got year and then month but we want to be able to see it as month name shorten with year at the end so to do this we can use scale underscore x underscore date and then we use the function part which we call data underscore labels and then we do the formatting now the reason for using b instead of m because you think months maybe m is that the b means that you will have the name of the month so i'm using b to be able to give me the shortened version because it's a lowercase b we do uppercase b you'll get the full month name but lowercase you just get the shortened month name and then i've put in a hyphen just to split the two you don't have to you can put anything in there you can put a uh, backslash anything and then i've done a lowercase y so it just gives you the last parts of the year so 2020 would just be 20. now if i was just to convert the date it would then just convert them here so we still have this issue of six month gaps so to get around that we need to put in a break again so this time we are stating one month so you put in breaks equal sign and then in brackets one month now if we was to run this now Ooh, let's run it from all the way up here otherwise it will fail and just to prove that it will fail i will just show you there you go so run it from here and then suddenly you got all the dates and it looks terrible and it's because it's overlapping now even if we were to say extend like that it can look better but say if you want to be able to have the graph like this you could read it but it's not again the most visually appealing layout for these particular dates so what you can do now is change the size if you wanted to or you could change the size and the angle to make it more appealing so this is where we use theme so when you go into use theme you need to state where you want the theme to be used and which part you want to use so we're going to go with the axis dot text dot x so then it knows the text of this axis will be the bit that we need to change we then state that we want to change the element of the text which will mean we can play with how it looks and we are going to change the size and the angle so if i run this now so now we have the date showing at a 90 degree angle with the size 10. now if you wanted to change how it looked we could go say 45 for the angle and size 8. you can just change it like that and then run again and then it will look like this i think it looks a lot better when it's at a 90 degree angle i'm going to move it back so now we have a lot better formatting going on here and making this a lot more visually appealing than the bar chart that we had originally at the start of the video but then you might be looking at the titles for each access so you're like mm, okay so what would i like to call them and how do i change that and this is where you can bring in labs so what labs will allow you to do is set the x and y axis and then you can set the x axis so you know you want what you want to call it in this case we want to change that from being month into date 
and then the y-axis we just want to have a space between new and cases so if we now run this all we now have a space between new and cases and date down here so thank you for watching and as always please like comment and subscribe and let me know if there's anything else you want me to cover in any other videos so as always until next time